If your confidence is down and your enthusiasm is down, how does that hit you compared to when you feel on fire? Right? When you're, when you're down and your, your confidence is just 10% off, you go, well, yeah, maybe things are good enough the way they are. Maybe I'll just leave it where it is. The hell with that. Borrow the enthusiasm from the past and attack each day. So I want to get to the point on how we can anchor in your goals so they become a reality. So here's where we go. You ready for some action steps? The first one, I just, I just did a podcast about two months ago uh, with a 17-year-old kid. He's got a great following, awesome kid, great energy. And we get done. We get done with the uh, presentation. And he said, what's one thing you could leave all my viewers that you wish someone would have told you when you were in your teens or early 20s. And I didn't think about it prior and it just came out. And it's the first thing I wanted to share today is, I said, what's standing between you, and I wanna say this to everybody in this room, what's standing between you and your next level of life is nothing more than the story you have on why it's not happening. I don't want to discredit some of you that are going through tough times. I don't know what your life, I don't know where you are in your life. Some of you are battling some really tough stuff. Some of you have some obstacles. But here's what I know. The story you have, if you say, I could be doing more real estate deals, but I'd be living a better life, but I don't have support. It's not the right time. I don't have money. It takes money to make money. Here's what I want you to acknowledge today. That what's standing between you and where you want to go is the story you have. So I want you to think about that. If, I was to, if you and I had the chance to sit down together and I asked you where you are in life and where you want to go, but what do you think is holding you back? I'd love for you to take the time and analyze that story because you're giving that story the power of holding you back. And here's some things to do to squash it. Recognize that story and then pretend it's five years from now and someone asks you, why haven't you accomplished anything you wanted to accomplish or the things you wanted to accomplish in the last five years? Would you be a little embarrassed to tell that story still after five years? Do you want to give that story that much power? The power to hold you back from your full potential? There's a whole nother level for all of us and usually it's that story. We, we attach things to it and we make it so real. You know, I don't have any support, or this economy isn't right, or the interest rates are changing, or it's too big of a city where I live, it's too small of a town, the market's moving too fast, or actually this market's a dead market, or any area of your life. Maybe this is the best relationship I can have. Maybe this is, this is the way I'm supposed to be. Maybe this is the health I'm supposed to have. It's the story you have. Change the story, and you'll change your outcome. So the couple of things to change the story is, one, is really think through, do you want to give it the power to hold you back anymore? Two, go find proof it's a lie. You see, I remember early high school thinking it takes money to make money. Nobody in my family had money. And I used to see people with money and I just had this perception. And, and every movie you watch as a kid is wealthy people are kind of like the evil ones. They're always like the, the villain in the movies, right? They're the villain in the movies or they were born with money. They acted different. They wore different watches. They, they dressed completely different, right? So you have these stories. And I remember thinking it takes money to make money. But then I had a couple things happen early on in my life. Um, uh, Joe Noto and uh, Alan Afuso. Both of them were older guys in my little town who were probably the two wealthiest guys in my town, both into real estate. It's probably the reason, one of the reasons I'm in real estate. But I remember being really young and being in Frank's Deli. It's a deli in our town. And I'm listening to them talk and I realized that they were like, their parents were Italian immigrants and they had absolutely nothing. Like they used to sleep, the kids used to sleep on flower bags because they didn't have money for mattresses. And they used to go get coins and they'd return milk bottles. And I'm listening to the story and I was just like, oh my God, that was a complete lie. The story I've, I've been thinking my whole life that I'm only gonna get rich if I go to college. I'll only be wealthy and secure if I had money, if someone could lend me money or if I had a partner, if someone could invest in me and give me money for my first deal. All those stories that I told myself were nothing more than the story holding me back. And those two guys sitting in Frank's Deli having a conversation didn't realize that they probably made one of the biggest impacts on my life. I realized, well, that's a lie. So what story do you have that you could prove is a lie? And the third part of that, after you say, are you going to really give this story the power, 
The second part is prove it's a lie. The third part that really empowers this is how can you turn that story around to be an empowering story that actually drives you? You see, I could have said, hey, I had dyslexia. I wasn't that good in school. I didn't go to college. Why should I write a book? Who am I to be smart enough? And I said that for a little while when my editor first told me that. But then I turned the story around and said, I didn't go to school. I have dyslexia. I don't have any money. And I wrote a kick-ass book. And all of a sudden, same story, different meaning, thank you, different meaning empowered me. And I remember saying that. To, I, I remember, listen, I feel blessed that it became a New York Times bestseller. And it just caught the right momentum and went and just took off. But I remember thinking is, how cool would it be to be a New York Times bestselling author with all those things against me? And all of a sudden, that negative thing, story became my, my power, it became my, 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 the juice that kept me going. All I know is with the right story, it doesn't matter what obstacle is in front of you, it doesn't matter what brick wall, you'll climb under it, you'll bust through it, you'll go over it. So change the story, change the outcome. Because what you focus on, what you focus on is who you are. I, I know you guys have all heard this and I, I want to share something. In the personal growth, in the, in the foundation for success, there's so many brilliant teachers, and we've heard a lot of this before. But what I'm hoping today and this weekend is it's the first time it actually sticks. The first time it actually becomes a part of what you do. Because we can change in an instant. Because here's what I know. If somebody would have told me 10 years ago that thoughts are things, that what we focus on is actually who we are, we're not who we are in whole. We're who we think we are. We're the thoughts that have in our head. And, and, and the thoughts that we have create the emotions we feel. Is that true or not? Is that true? Are we, are we falling asleep? Are we, is that true? There we go. So the, the thoughts we have, the feelings we have, create the emotions. And emotions anchor our actions in place. Think about that. If we think long enough that we're screwed and this is never gonna work for us, and then we feel an emotion of helplessness or feeling hopeless. And if you have that feeling of helplessness or hopelessness enough when it comes to doing your own thing, can that anchor that emotion in and you just always feel, because you don't wanna feel bad, right? I mean, do we really do things for money or do we do things for the way it's gonna make us feel? I wanted to get money out of the way so I never had to feel insecure of going backwards. I wanna feel amazing when my kids are practicing, they can look over and see me, it lights me up. I want to be in control because I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. It makes me feel good. We all do stuff for feelings. So if we have the wrong thoughts and we let them circulate in our mind and that becomes our emotions and then we feel towards it, all of a sudden we put ourselves in a loop and it's self-defeating. So be the witness of those thoughts as much as you possibly can. Don't let them take ownership of you. Can we change a thought in a moment? Do you ever, you ever in a bad mood? and then something happens immediately and all of a sudden you're in a great mood. You know, I love the book, anybody read the book, um, Dale Carnegie's How to Stop Worry and Start Living? It's a great book, I'd recommend it to everybody. There's a part in there and he talks about uh, how your feelings can change, your thoughts can change your emotions in a moment. He talks about his, uh, a guy's daughter comes home, she's an 18 year old daughter comes home from work, she worked really hard all day, she was grumpy, she just wanted to go to bed, she's like, I hate work, I don't feel good, I have a stomach ache, I'm just going to lay down. And all of a sudden the phone rang and it was her boyfriend and asked her if she wanted to go out dancing. And in a second she jumped up, looked amazing and went out and danced till two o'clock in the morning. What changed? Nothing but her thoughts. And then her thoughts changed the emotion and she got the results she wanted. We have to design our life. We have to design our lives or it will run us. So I'm gonna encourage you to design your life. Decide what you want. It's offense versus defense. It's, it's like waiting for emails to come in and just answering problems rather than pushing emails out to get your business going. And some days don't we feel like we're just waiting around for bad emails to come in to fix it? You see, some people spend their whole lives trying to avoid pain, trying to avoid what could go wrong. And all you're doing is playing defense and you're, juggle, you're going around trying to just fit in and make each day okay. What I'm gonna say is that you said before about declaring what you want. Live life offensively.